Uh, hello. So today we are going to talk about a new topic. So far, we have studied what happens, uh, what happens, uh, what is the endogeneity problem, and how to fix that problem. And also we discussed some related topics like weak IV and like too many IVs. But in this uh, part, we are going to study what happens if your assumption is wrong. So for example, uh, you believe that a certain variable is, a certain regressor is exogenous. So it does not have any problem. But actually, your assumption was wrong. Then what happens in your estimation and what happens in your analysis? We are going to study that kind of uh, problems. And we call that problem as the misspecification uh, problem. So, which means you specify uh, the, the model with some assumptions, but the assum some of the assumptions are uh, misspecified, are wrong. So, uh, the model is misspecified, wrongly specified. That's the meaning of uh, this problem. So, as I said, uh, you make assumptions, but some of them may be wrong, and then you have to think about uh, the potential problem and uh, where, where, how, how much, uh, how much is the misspecification problem, and uh, what is affected and what not, and uh, and which direction the misspecification uh, bias occurs. So the resulting bias. So when your when you, one of your assumptions is wrong, it will result in a bias. So that is called misspecification bias. And we say if your model is uh, if, if all the assumptions in your model are correct, then we say your model is correctly specified. Otherwise, if one of the, some of your assumptions are wrong, then we say your model is misspecified. So um, it's intuitive to understand. And uh, we only have learned two models. And we, have, we could explain a lot of ideas only from these two models. One is the classical linear regression model. Basically, it assumes that every regressor is exogenous. And, uh, and the second one is the IV, instrumental variable, linear regression model, where some of the regressors are assumed to be uh, endogenous. So we can think about, by the way, by the way, we are not worried much about uh, linearity or uh, or the full rank assumption here. Linearity assumption is mainly for simplicity. So relax, relaxing the assumption is not, not that difficult. But I don't do that because it will, uh, it will require a much more complicated notation and theory. So that's the only reason I'm not considering that. But uh, extending linear model to nonlinear model is not that difficult. Just it requires uh, heavier mathematics, so I'm not doing that. And the full rank assumption is also not a concern because you can tell that. So full rank assumption is only about the observed variables. So you can see whether there are any, there is any full rank uh, or any multicollinearity problem or not. So if there is a problem, you can tell that. So uh, it's not a serious problem in that sense. So you don't need to worry about whether uh, your full rank assumption is correct or wrong, but just go check it. So well, we all will ignore that then. The only main problem is the exogeneity assumption. And exogeneity assumption can be imposed directly on the regressor in the classical linear regression model, or the exogeneity assumption could be imposed on the instrumental variable in the IV re linear regression model. So both are uh, both will be uh, studied. So what happens if the, the exogeneity assumption in the CLR model is wrong? And second, what if the exogeneity of the instrument uh, is wrong? So let me uh, discuss first the misspecified exogeneity assumption from the classical linear regression model. So, <clears throat> Suppose that uh, we, we, we consider the classical linear regression model, that is 
what you believe. You believe that uh, your data satisfy the classical linear re regression model assumptions. Uh, so linearity full rank assumptions are fine, but now we are going to study what happens if the exogenity assumption was actually wrong, but you, you ignore that potential problem, just identify beta without the potential uh, misspecification. And let's think about the simplest example. Uh, when you have this simple, uh, simple one variable, one regressor model, and everything standard uh, follows like this. So this is the problem. We, we, we believed that x is exogenous with respect to epsilon, so uncorrelated with epsilon, but actually it is not. X has some correlation with epsilon, which is denoted as rho. Rho, rho, has, uh, rho is a non-zero constant. Then, then, so under this setup, so from your assumptions, based on what you believe, simply you believe that beta can be identified this way. We proved it earlier, and it is easy to show that. So you just believe that beta is covariance between x, y divided by variance of x. And, and then, so let's see, this must be wrong. There must be some problem in this identification result. To see that, we go back to the, the derivation of this result. How did we derive this? We used uh, this form. We take covariance on both sides of y equation. And then the key point here is this part in the end vanishes. The covariance between x and epsilon was uh, zero. If the true, if the assumptions were correct in our uh, classical linear regression model. But as you see now, this is not zero. It is rho. So this term does not go away. So now we cannot solve beta using this equation. So uh, this result, this result is derived from this equation without covariance x epsilon. But now this is wrong. So if you simply take this equation, then beta must be identified as this, right? So beta must be covariance x, y minus mu uh, a row divided by variance of x. So then let's think about this. The left hand side, the left hand side guy, left hand side guy is what you believe to be beta, right? So if you believe in the classical linear regression assumptions, then you believe that beta can be identified by this uh, formula, but in the true model, in the truth, it ends up with uh, something different. Beta plus something. Something is the bias. So if you calculate this from the data, what you obtain is not beta, but beta plus the bias. So it makes the, uh, so it breaks down the identification result. You are not identifying the correct parameter. And remember, this problem is not about the sample size. No matter how many observations you have, you get the, the misspecification bias. This problem is on your assumptions, not on data itself. So uh, as I said, this is why distinguishing the, the cause of the problem uh, uh, is important, whether it is from data or from assumptions. Uh, like, like if you don't understand what's going on, then the problem cannot be solved at all. Okay, another, another way to interpret, so this, this equation is based on the moment condition approach or IV approach, but you may think it in a different way using uh, the like another, considering another equation like this. So now, now assume that just to, to, to see what's going on, I'll assume that the error term epsilon is observed. If epsilon is observed, 
we may consider a linear, linear projection of epsilon onto x in this way. So this is just purely imaginary equation uh, if epsilon was observed. And um, in general, in the if the classical linear regression model was true, uh, then delta has to be zero. So if x was exogenous, the covariance between epsilon and x must be zero, so delta must be zero. But now, because the exogeneity assumption is wrong, delta is not zero anymore. Delta can be written in this way. It depends on, delta depends on rho, the correlation between, covariance between x and epsilon. And then, if you plug this back into this equation here, then what you get here is, so x is here and epsilon has another x, right? So you can think it this way. The effect of x on y outcome have two different channels. The, the effect of x on y have two different channels. That's what I explained at the beginning of this chapter. The first, chap the first channel is the direct channel, direct effect. x has direct effect on y, which is this effect. Uh, x increase in x will have direct effect on y. And the second channel is an indirect effect through epsilon. So increase in x implies uh, higher epsilon, and higher epsilon increases y again. So x affects epsilon, epsilon affects y. That is an um, uh, indirect channel. For example, in the example of salary, wage, um, and like intelligence example, say a uh, uh, salary, uh, excuse me, salary, education, and intelligence example, then say x is education, epsilon is intelligence. So higher education implies higher intelligence, and higher intelligence implies higher earnings. So that is the indirect channel. So then you may uh, capture these guys in this way. So when epsilon increases by one, the coefficient of epsilon is one, and coefficient of x uh, with respect to epsilon is delta. So the direct effect is beta and indirect effect is delta. So this is, delta is the the noise, the bias, the bias that we don't want, we would like to remove from our estimation. So the bias can be written in this way, which is this guy. The, so the misspecification bias is exactly the indirect channel that I explained earlier in this chapter. And, uh, and another thing we can learn from this here is that we cannot, we cannot evaluate uh, this part, we don't know, we never know, uh, uh, like we, so from the standard model, we cannot calculate how big the misspecification bias is. Uh, to calculate the misspecification bias, we have to calculate this guy, that is not a problem, but we need to know the true beta, which is impossible, right? So we cannot calculate beta because the assumption is wrong, so we cannot calculate the misspecification bias. So misspecification bias is unknown. If we knew that, then we identify beta, right? If you, you know this and you know this, then beta will be identified from uh, that. But usually it is unknown, but still in many cases, we can tell the direction of the bias. So if you have any idea about the sign of rho, how epsilon and x are correlated, then that tells you about the direction of the misspecification bias. For example, in our education ability example, higher education is clearly associated with higher intelligence. So which means the correlation between x and epsilon are positive, or rho is positive. This rho is positive, then means then from this, the misspecification bias is positive, which means what you believe to be beta is greater than the true beta. So 
if you know the if you know this uh, direction, then at least you can say so. Like um, so, then at least you can tell that you got some estimator. But if you know that this estimator is overestimating the true beta, then you can you can just kind of uh, guess like you can you get at least the the maximum possible beta. So what you you get some kind of information. So what you estimate is not the correct beta, but you say you can say that beta must be smaller than that. So the effect of education on college will be smaller than a certain point, and in some cases, this information could be still uh, useful. So uh, that's that's uh, what we can tell without much uh, additional effort. Okay, and then in the next video, I am going to extend uh, the model to two variable case. So uh, see you there. Bye.